A heated discussion erupted on the Joe Budden podcast about the Bible. I told her, I was like, the older I get, the more a lot of this seems like BS. I'm not going to hold you. And faith and religion and the LGTV community and so much more. It's Asian. not explicitly said in the Bible. I've heard that My it is thing not. Is, even if it is, I don't if know, it's though. explicitly said, then you can't tell me the same person loves everybody. And to certain people's credit, they said that they were not experts in this conversation, while other people attempted to straw man and or just completely dismiss the claims of Christianity without really trying to dig beneath the surface to get more context. So this is one of his co-hosts. His name is Lamar Ice, and he jumps into a conversation he was having with his mother and how they always derail two topics of faith. Okay, so check this out. I got into another conversation with my moms over belief in religion again. Mm -hmm. This just keep happening. I be trying to run away from this shit. Me and my mother to talk about the weather. And at some point, she just gonna steer me over here and now five, I'm, five I'm minutes like, in. I'm like, dog, how did we get here? I told her, I was like, yo, the older I get, the more a lot of this seems like BS. I'm not gonna hold you. To Ice's point, I could understand how having these sorts of conversations with family members could be unproductive. It's like talking politics. You're over there to hang out with your family. You're trying to have a nice deal. They want to go and jump in the deep end or whatever they're passionate about at this moment, right? I, I understand that, man. And, and, and as followers and, and, and Christians, as followers of Jesus and Christians, we should take note about how we might be coming off to other people, even if they're family, because you don't always want to go and have conversations about deep, complicated topics that people either may not want to have or may not be equipped to have with you. This is how you can control people. We got this need to Christine. believe of a purpose, and, and it's a way to keep people. It's almost Santa Claus. Mm -hmm. you, know, you, tell, you tell kids, hey, if you're good all year. Now, has religion historically been used to control people? Have there been people that have manipulated the scriptures? Have there been people that have manipulated the the different faiths to control people? Well, yes, obviously, right? And, and there's a lot of things that can be used to control people. His initial two assessments are, are fair. Assessment number one, man, it's hard to have these conversations with family. I don't always like having these conversations. Assessment number two, uh, religion can be used to control people. Fair enough. You, know, you, tell, you tell kids, hey, if you're good all year, if you do what you're supposed to do, you'll get gifts at the end. You tell people, hey, if you abide by these rules and you're good at the end of life, you're going to go you're to heaven. Go to heaven. It's, it's yeah. adult Santa Claus. And that's what yeah. I was it's adult Santa Claus. Joe Bunn says adult Santa Claus. Now, what's important to know is that anyone that's ever read the New Testament, anyone that's ever read the Gospels would tell you that it's not if you do good things, you will get to go to heaven. It's actually not that. You are a broken person and a sinner. You're created in the image of God, so you have dignity and you have value. But because of sin, you are separated from a good God, it, it would be impossible for you to stand in the presence of a perfect and holy being like God. And because God loves you, he decides to send his son Jesus to live the life you couldn't live, die the death you should have died, on the cross in your place, and then he rose three days later, creating a pathway for people to have communion and to have a relationship with him through the sacrifice on the cross. And also, in the same way that Jesus rose, resurrected, we too will someday have new resurrected bodies. We too will rise and there will be a new heaven and new earth. That is the good news. You're actually incapable of being as good as God requires. And so God dealt with the doing good things. Jesus on the cross said, it is finished. And now what the cross does is it levels the playing field and we all stand before our, 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 our own life and we have to acknowledge that we're sinners, right? This is not Santa Claus. This is a huge contrast with how most people perceive religion to be. Do, 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 do good works, and, and maybe God will let you in if you're good enough. It's a typical, let me earn my way to heaven approach. And the reality is that when you place your faith in Jesus, you become born again, something new happens. It says our, our, our heart of stone is removed and we're given a heart of flesh, okay? It says that all of a sudden, uh, Philippians chapter two, we get new desires to do God's will. Now, it doesn't mean Christians are perfect. We're not. We still struggle with some form of sin on this side of eternity. But what it does mean is when we cooperate with the Holy Spirit over time, we become more and more like Jesus. Religion kept the slaves in line. Mm -hmm. Hey, you go through all of this turmoil and hardship, but as long as you pray, you're meant to struggle in this life so that you'll be, be okay in the that. afterlife. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, well, I'm And so and when you're talking about tough conversations like slavery and, and, and that, it's also important to note that Christianity 
also led the abolitionist movement towards overturning the institutions of slavery. Jonathan Edwards is one of the biggest thought leaders in reform circles. And Jonathan Edwards unfortunately had slaves, but Jonathan Edwards' son was one of the leading pioneers in the abolitionist movements to overturn slavery. Some of the, the, the foremost thought leaders and people that operated in these worlds were actually hugely instrumental in overturning slavery. Why? Because of their Christian worldview, which clearly says that we're all created in the image of God. My daughter's three. She's very curious. And I'm just at the point like, damn, what do am we are we cool with her introducing to her and her believing in? And <clears throat> do I want to put her on the same path that I was on? Because, yo, when I was younger, we was in church every Sunday. I ain't understand none of that. So I think it's interesting that he would say that about church, but what do they tell her Santa Claus is fake? So this is Melissa Ford. They're, she's one of their new co-hosts. And Melissa Ford used to be a I think what they would call her is like a video vixen from back in the day. And so she talks about being raised Catholic. And, and it's interesting that when you see people raised in very religious homes, they just tend to have a different perspectives and kind of yo-yo the opposite direction, which is where she says that her mom didn't raise her Catholic because her mom was raised so Catholic. When she met my godmother, they were both, you know, raised in the old country, you know, um, Europeans, and they were both raised Catholic. And they made a promise to each other that if they had daughters, that they were not going to raise them Catholic, Christian, nothing, no religion whatsoever. Mm. Allow them to make the choice because they found that, you know, religion was extremely, especially Catholicism, it was very oppressive, especially mm -hmm. for women. For, for women. Yes. Mm -hmm. I appreciated the fact that my parents didn't kind of quote, you know, uh, for lack of a better expression, force feed religion down my throat and tell me what to believe because then I got to float around mm -hmm. and experiment and talk to, you know, I had, you know, I had Muslim girlfriends in high school and I had- As did I, I had, I had Muslim friends in high school too. I had my, my best friend is Buddhist. And I had, got some Buddhist friends too. And so when I went to her house, I learned about, you know, Nietzsche and Daishon and Buddhism and the Gohanzin and Namiyoho Renge Kyo and morning and evening. I learned about that stuff. I learned about different religions. That's basically my point. So I, I got to, I got to make my own informed decision. To be fair, I, I don't know what it's like to be raised in a strict religious home. However, I know what it's like to be raised in a fairly lawless home. And boy, do I wish that my parents were a bit more involved. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I don't. I don't understand how some of y'all, some of y'all out there, can practice certain faiths and be murderers. Now, I, 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 I'm, I'm completely perplexed on where Joe decided to take this. <laughs> well, obviously, obviously, that's a bit inco incongruent, as we would say. It's incongruent. That would be like saying, ah, I'm a vegan, but I like to eat meat on the weekends. Well, no, you're not a vegan anymore, bud. Right. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm perplexed on what he means here. Bro, that's one of the biggest contradictions in the world. Mm -hmm. The one that get me all the time, like all these quote unquote religious people. I'm sorry, I might be killing whole. I mean, killing hundreds of thousands of others. Not everyone that claims a religion is always living up to the tenets of said religion. Now, the one that always gets me, especially nowadays, is when I see all of these religious folks who God loves everyone, unless you're home. Mm -hmm. you're like, do we love everybody or not? Of course, this question comes up, right? This is this is the, this is this is the crux of the of the issue. The foundation is not the gospel. The foundation is people attempting to earn their way to God. Then it it it, it elevates into other people's misunderstanding, and then it, it it goes to well, if God loves anyone, surely He wouldn't prohibit anyone from doing anything. Right after Joe Budden just said, "I don't understand how certain people can claim to be religious yet go out and take other people's lives." There's a lot of just kind of inconsistencies here. Well, stop what they say. No, you ain't tricking me. But Joe, yo, I, li I like how Joe is navigating this because Joe is like staying out of it, but you could tell he wants to say more things about it because I'm not, you know, I've heard, I, like I've seen Joe post Christian stuff. We've seen him put different apologists up. So this is a very interesting conversation. And he says something that's, that's, that's a little sideways here. He said what? Because I'm not Mr. Bible expert. But Thank you for saying that. They say that that's written in bold letters in the Bible. It's being a sin uh, written in the Bible. I don't think it is. I'm gonna stop it. <laughs> so you're showing your hand here if you if you ask that question. What if the very things that Christian culture often dismisses as worldly actually aren't bad desires? What do I mean by that? It's obvious that the world values things like money, fitness, fame, and immediate gratification. But I like to propose that those natural human desires can actually be redirected with God's words and God's ways of doing things in order to bring glory to him and serve our neighbor on this side of eternity. And I like to call this very concept God-driven ambition. And we'll be unpacking all of this at my very first live podcast in-person gathering happening August 26th in Oceanside, California. We'll have GodLogic Apologetics, Pastor Jeff Moores from Rhythm Church, John Keith, Trizzle Fitness, and hosted by my guy Ray Rock. Lock it in on your calendars right now. Saturday, August 26th 
in Oceanside, California at Rhythm Church. Click the button down below or go to RuslanLive.com to get more information and get your ticket now. It's not explicitly said in the Bible. I've heard that it My is not. Is, even if it is. I don't if know, it's though. explicitly said, then you can't tell me the same person loves everybody. Leviticus 18.22. You shall not lie with a male as with a woman. It's an abomination. Oh. Abomination. Oh. Okay. Wow. So there's a lot there. There's just some straw mans. Ephesians chapter 2. I think these 10 verses in Ephesians chapter 2, uh, Paul beautifully summarizes all of this. And you were dead in your offenses and sins, in which you previously walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the air, of the spirit that is now working in the sons of disobedience. Among them, we too all previously lived in the lusts of our flesh, indulging the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, just as the rest. This is the world post Genesis 3. If, you, if you're ever confused on why things seem haywire, why the world seems broken, this is the description of what happens after the fall. All of us, we also previously walked in the same ways. So we're no, we're no better in these things. Among them, we all too previously lived in the lusts of our flesh, indulging the desires of the flesh. And the flesh just means your natural propensity to do the things that your flesh, your carnal state, your natural state wants to do. And we're by nature children of wrath just as the rest. So God has to deal with the issue of sin in the same way a judge has to deal with criminals. And that is with consequences, okay? That, but God, verse 4, being rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us even when we were dead in our wrongdoings, made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you haven't said. So the good news here is that God, even when we were dead, even when we were doing what we wanted to do, even when we were living the way we wanted to live, even when we were objects of wrath, deserving of punishment, because we were out of control based on our sinful nature, even in all of that, he made us alive with Christ and raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the ages to come, he might show the boundless riches of his grace and kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. So those of us that are in Christ Jesus, he wants to show his riches and his grace and kindness towards us. And then this is the kicker, right? For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not the result of work, so that no one may boast. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. So Christians, in my opinion, should be the most humble. Verse 10, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand so that we may walk in them. So we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works because we have new hearts, because we have new desires, because we're born again, we do good works, okay? So, so, so it's important to understand this. Now, when it comes to the issue of LGTV, here it is in Romans 1. I think Romans 1 better articulates what's happening. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of people who suppress the truth and unrighteousness. Okay, so it's revealed against all people who are unrighteous and all people who suppress the truth and all ungodliness, all of it, not just the sins with the LGTV community. Because that which is known about God is evident within them, for God made it evident to them. Made it evident to who? To everybody, to people. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes, that is, his eternal power and divine nature, have been clearly perceived, being understood by what has been made, so that they are without excuse. People are without excuse. Why? Because God has been revealing himself, his power, his eternal power, his divine nature. Um, this is what we call this the, the general revelation, right, or common grace. For even though they knew God, they did not honor him as God or give thanks, but they became, but they became futile, and their reasoning and their senseless hearts were darkened. Claiming to be wise, they became fools, and they exchanged the glory of the incorruptible God for an image in the form of corruptible mankind, of birds, four-footed animals, and crawling creatures. From the beginning, people have been taking the created things and putting them in place of the Creator, because we naturally don't want to worship the Creator. We want to worship the creation. And this could be in literal idolatry, or this could be in pursuing one's own sinful nature, pursuing as their God. Verse 24, therefore God gave them up to vile impurity in the lust of their hearts so that their bodies would be dishonored among them. For they exchanged the truth of God for falsehood and worshiped and served the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. So here we go as we see people substituting it, and he's, and he's, he's doubling down on this. And then he says again, verse 26, for this reason, God gave them over to degrading passions. 
for their women exchanged natural relations for that which is contrary to nature, and likewise the men to abandon natural relations with women and burn in their desires toward one another, males with males committing shameful acts and receiving their own persons the due penalty of their error. A lot of people say, well, are we sure the Bible says that that act is, is, is wrong? Maybe that word is mistranslated. Here we have an actual description of women doing things with women, men doing things with women. Shameful acts, right? God, God, you're not a robot. None of us are robots. God doesn't want robots. So God's giving them over to their desires. As just as they did not see fit to acknowledge God, God gave them up to a depraved mind to do those things that are not proper. People having been filled with all unrighteousness, wickedness, greed, and evil, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, and malice. They are gossip, slanderers, haters of God, insolent, arrogant, boastful, inventors of evil, disobedient to parents, without understanding, untrustworthy, unfeeling, unmerciful, and although they knew the ordinance of God that those who practice such things are worthy of death, they not only do the same, but also approve of those who practice them. So that is the state of mankind, and God is just letting people do what they want to do. And then it goes on to explain that if you are a Christian, you have no excuse. And so this is important for all of us to acknowledge that people are broken, that the reason why Jesus had to come is because people are broken, and that in that, we create, we have a pathway to, 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 to God. There's a clear verse about what the Bible teaches, about salvation, and about who's, who's saved, and then there's a clear verse about the act that they have an issue with. But the deeper question is, why would we ever presume that God wouldn't have an issue with specific behaviors? If the creator of the universe has specific intent for his creation, why would we be so arrogant as to tell God he's wrong about what he created us for. Why would we then be mad when God says, yeah, I don't really, uh, I, I think you guys are far gone. I'm going to let you do you. <laughs> either God loves everybody or God doesn't love anybody. Either God loves anybody, every, either God loves everybody, but why doesn't he love the alcoholic? That's not, that, that's actually not what we're being discussed. God does love everybody and God does accept everybody, including the alcoholic, including the adulterer, including the person that's practicing, uh, you know, the LGTV lifestyle. The difference is you can love people without co-signing their behaviors and fully embracing themselves. In the same way, a parent can love their child while saying, you know what, this behavior is inappropriate. And the behavior that's inappropriate and out of pocket, that's, that, that, that's you disobeying me, is actually going to hurt you. So I love you. As a, as a good father, but I'm going to tell you, don't put your hand on the stove because that stove is hot and you're going to burn your hand. And if you ignore me the first couple times, I'm going to try to intercede and pull that back. I'm going to pull you away from the stove. And it's not just with those things. It's a whole lot of stuff, idolatry, fornication, so on and so forth. Why? Because God is ultimately a good God and he created his, 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 this, this world to function in a specific kind of way. But specifically with intimacy to be reserved for a one man, one woman covenantal marriage with the option to create offspring and reproduce and be fruitful. It's not that God is this killjoy trying to keep good things from us. It's actually the opposite. It's actually God trying to protect us from ourselves. And at some point, he's just going to hand you over to whatever it is you want to do. He's, he's, he's not a, 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 a vindictive lunatic. He's not a vindictive lunatic right? That's going to control you. And so ultimately, you and me and all of us, we can be a slave to sin or we can be freed from sin and be a servant of God. Those are really the only two options. And it's hard when you look out into a world where everyone's a zombie and you're seeing a bunch of zombies, the walking dead, and then wondering why a good God who wants his children to be alive would say, don't practice zombie-like behavior. I have something better for you. This can be confusing, and I understand. I understand Joe Budden's uh, and, and, and ISIS frustration and the confusion and not getting it and maybe getting bad representations. I wanted to make sure I was clear on that because I think there's so much confusion about these topics, and, and, it's, a, and it's really a bummer. It's really a bummer that these things get, get, get straw manned and not dug into deeper and actually sitting with somebody that could, that, and, and by the way, what I said isn't even, like, I'm not even talking scholarly level of exegesis. This is the bare bones. These are the basics. They could sit with people way smarter than me, and I'm sure people way smarter than me would love to come on their platform and discuss these things further and articulate these things. Hey, this is a segment from our daily after party stream. Consider partnering with us online for as little as $5 a month to get access to these daily after party streams completely unedited. 
You'll also get access to our podcast as they are streamed live into the community before anyone else gets to see them, get to interact with our guests, get access to our private Discord server, and a discount code for our store for as little as $5 a month. Ultimately, that will help towards helping us continue contextualizing the gospel using media and podcast here on YouTube. All right, I'll see you over there. Peace.